skip. I'm going to skip the URL again this time. So, uh, Andy, I think we're uh, we're all set at six thirty one. So, if you want to start uh, recording, I'll wait till I see the little red light. How do I get to the? How do I sign in? This way should be good now. I've got the light, and it says we're up to twenty seconds. So, okay, all righty. Um, cause usually it'll show for me. So, um, okay. I'll assume that we're good. Um, okay. Good evening, everybody. Um, we're going to start with the, uh, the emergency order before we get it down to business here. As chair of the budget committee, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there's no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which is authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I'm confirming that we are A, providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. We're utilizing WebEx for this electronic meeting. All members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through the platform. The public has access to contemporaneously listen and, if necessary, participate in this meeting by dialing the following phone. One. 408-418-9388 and access code 1798706761 or by clicking on the website address as posted in the agenda um, as uh, listed on town hall and other locations. B, providing public notice of necessary information for accessing the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting, including how to access the meeting using WebEx or telephonically. Instructions have also been provided on the website of the board at www.pembroke-nh.com. C, providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. Email a camage, so A-C-A-M-I-D-G-E, at SAU53.org. So that would be email to Andy. And D, adjourning the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. If the public is unable to access the meeting, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. So we will start by taking roll call attendance. And I will start with Andy. Oh, and please also state whether you are uh, alone uh, or there's somebody in the room with you. Andy. Present and alone. Clint. Present and alone. Mike. Mike, you're on mute. I'm present, and my wife is upstairs. All righty, thank you. Uh, Dave? Present and uh, alone for the moment. Jerry? Present and alone. Peter? Peter, you're on mute. Sorry, present and alone. Thank you. Paul? Present and alone. Brian. Present and alone. Armand. Present and alone. And Karen. Present and alone. Wonderful. Thank you very much. All right. So for tonight uh, on the agenda, so we have um, business to finish with the town, uh, and that'll be the uh, review of the Public Works uh, Collective Bargaining Agreement. Um, and then the, uh, the the vote on that new warrant item. Uh, drafts of the updated warrant went out, I think, uh, yesterday from David. So we should all have that in front of us. That's the only remaining article on the town warrant. We'll then come back to, uh, I guess, Andy for an update on the, the school budget, because there are some changes there. And you all saw the, the summary that I sent out, I'm sure. But uh, we'll let Andy um, kind of expand on that and answer your questions. And then we will vote on the uh, warrant articles for the school. All the war the warrant went out um, the other day. Uh, I forwarded all that out with along with the updated budget and all the rest of the information uh, that came from Patty. Um, and then in terms of other business, a couple of little things um, regarding the uh, public hearing, and then we will um, adjourn the meeting, and then we'll actually continue into a dry run. So I'll look to. Andy and Jerry and uh, uh, David, I think, to uh, to stay on if possible at that point, and uh, we'll do a dry run on the public hearing to make sure we all have our act together. 
So busy night. Um, so first up is approval of the minutes of January 21st. And um, it looked like we had a, a bit of a, a mix up here in terms of the version. So I sent an updated version of minutes out this afternoon that reflected some uh, tweaks and updates from Jerry. Um, so uh, I think we technically will do this as an as amended with the set from Jerry reflecting what we the changes that we want to do. And those are, you know, some little um, some little minor things. So um, is there a motion to consider approval of the minutes of January 21st? Yeah, motion to consider. OK, is there a second? Second. OK, so that was Karen and Clint, I believe. Um, so we obviously will be doing this as amended. Um, are there any other questions or, or comments on the um, amended version of the, uh, the minutes? Um, I have one correction, Mark. Okay. On page three of five, uh, second paragraph from the bottom, there's a, there's a sentence that says, Karen would like to see 600,000 to 650,000 in overall reductions for the committee to consider. Um, I don't, I'm not quite sure where that came from. I don't remember endorsing a specific amount for the committee to consider. Um, the, the statement before that, I clearly remember talking about the $875,000 in potential savings from the positions I talked about, but I don't, I didn't endorse any specific amount. Okay, so it's, would you be uh, comfortable then if we just, if we eliminated the last sentence, the Karen would also like to see sentence, is that what you're referring yes. to? Sorry, yes, was it a yes? Yes, please. Oh, okay, so uh, on, pa on page three at the bottom, we would be deleting. Karen would also like to see 600 to 650K for the committee to consider. Yes, yes. Any other adjustments or corrections? Okay, so we will vote then on the uh, approval of the minutes as amended. Uh, Karen? Yes, approved. Honest. Okay. Brian. Yes. Paul. I wasn't looking up, but I think Paul, you're on mute. You're still on mute? Yes. Okay, thank you. Peter. <sighs> Was that a yes? Did I hear? Yeah, I think he's on mute. Looks like a yes. Um, I'm leaving. Yes. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Jerry. Yes. Dave. Yes. Mike. Yes. Uh, Clint. Yes. And Andy. Yes. Um, oh. Just a note: a couple folks have been muted a couple of times. That's probably because. I'm the one doing the muting. So if you leave yourself open and I'm hearing background noise, I'm just going through the list and muting everybody so that it's clear. Um, so if you leave yourself open, the next time you talk, you'll probably need to unmute yourself anyway. Thank you, Andy. Um, okay, so first up is the uh, review of the Public Works CBA. So I will turn it over to David. Okay, uh, the board met last night to review the final contract. They ratified the vote and approved um, and moved it forward to the warrant. So now before the budget committee, you have the, it's a four year contract. So you have all the numbers that are there. And the first year would be the $7,310 to raise and appropriate. Anything particularly, um notable in, in terms of the uh, the agreement david not at all it's actually pretty status quo from the prior one last time i said i wanted them to go longer so that i would i would retire from the next one but it didn't luck out that way <laughs> you can't retire <laughs> i told jerry 10 years <laughs> so all right i just, I, I just want to thank for, david. Just for, for full transparency mark um, it's one thing that's a little bit budget related. I don't think it's going to amount to anything. And it's, there was a uh, cap 
that was removed. Uh, I wrote it down. Where is it? Um, uh, at 1.6, oh, on 10A, uh, cost of living, we removed the cap for that uh, in the four year contract. That's a difference from last year. I just wanted to make sure that was right out there. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I assume the cost of living is there's still some kind of calculated basis for that. Is that correct? So the cost of living adjustment is based on the same language as before the preceding year's social security costs of increase. And and what Karen's talking about is the merit increase used to be the language in there. You could not. The cap was at 4% a combo between the merit and the social security. And the only one year that that would have hit and taken place would have been this year. So that was removed out of there. So there's no cap on it. So if social security is 2% and the cost of living, uh, the merit happens to be 2%, that person will get the 4%. If social security is 2.5 and 2% merit, that person will get 4.5 instead of being capped at 2%, at 4% rather. So that's, that's all there is to it. And like I said, this is probably... This is the first, uh, 2020 was the first year that that happened probably in the last eight years. Thank you, David. Uh, Jerry. You're on mute. That's what happens when you get too many screens open. Uh, I want to be uh, certain that as I'm looking at the town warrant article, article number three, the uh, the amount for the CBA uh, for 2021 will be seven thousand three hundred and ten dollars. That is that correct? That's yeah, correct. So the eight thousand seven hundred and twelve is the total operating budget, and then what's going to be the tax impact will be if articles four through Article eight, if those pass, those will get added on to the eight point seven million dollars. And that will be what your tax rate is based on. Yeah, Mark, I have a follow up. Um, where does that leave our summary of of tax rate sheet that uh, uh, because these are, are late breaking numbers and uh, I would assume our 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 rate sheet is going to be need to be updated again before yeah, the public yeah, hearing yeah that's correct that's correct so I, the, the rate sheet needs to be updated for um for for this here um and then also you know in terms of us uh what we've uh recommended or not recommended um for both town and school that needs to get added onto the sheet i don't have anything on the sheet there for us right now so um you know probably work on that tomorrow um and uh jerry i'll probably pass it by you just a sanity check as well other questions okay then i guess um sounds like we uh, might be at a point to uh accept a uh, a motion to uh consider article four to see if the town will vote to the cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Board of Selectmen and the International Union of Operating Engineers Local 98 regarding public work employees, calling for the following increases in salaries and benefits. Uh, for 2021, 7310, 2022, 6926, 2023, 7174, 2024, 8240. Further raise an appropriate sum of 7,310 for the current fiscal year, such sum representing the additional costs attributable to the Increasing <laughs> salaries and benefits required by the new agreement over those will be paid at current staffing levels in accordance with the most recent collective bargaining agreements. Move to approve. Second. And that was Clint and Dave, I believe. Okay. Um, any uh, discussion? Okay, then we'll go for the roll call vote. Andy? Yes. Clint. Yes. Mike. Yes. Dave. Yeah. Uh, yes. Peter. Yes. Paul. Yes. Brian. 
Yes. Armand. Yes. And Karen. You are on mute, Karen. All right. Yes. Thank you. Even though I can read lips, it doesn't work well for the recording, I guess. So, uh, all right. Do I get a vote? You didn't call my name. Who did, yes. Oh, oh, Jerry, did I skip over you? Oh, that must have been like this, like Freudian thing or something. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go right ahead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about that. That's, I mean, I, I work off a list. It's, one would think I would be able to read a list, but getting old, I guess. Um, okay. Um, is there any other comment, question, or business in terms of the town budget? We voted on all the Warren articles. We voted to recommend everything. So I think we're good to go there. Um, or actually, did, did we do the did we do Article Three last week? I can't remember. Did we do the big the big? Yeah. You know, yes, yeah, we did. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it's right in front of me. Okay. Cool. All well, right. Jerry was concerned that we didn't have that last warrant. I remember him being concerned or not concerned, just mentioning it. But I think we did vote on that. Okay. I, I think you're right because I I made some notes that this was the only one left. So, okay, wonderful. Um, with that, we will shift gears to the school. Um, so you all saw the, uh, the 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 little summary note that I sent out from you know my observations of Monday's meeting, uh, but I'll turn it over to Andy uh, to uh, give a, a a more complete recap. Um, and anything else he wants to add in about other discussions. Sure. Thanks, Mark. Um, I think you summed it up pretty well. Uh, and there's a recording out there for anybody that wants to get really in depth, but I guess the bottom line is we cut a fair amount of things. Um, the first thing you'll notice is that the number of warrant articles is, is down significantly. Um, I think there were five or six stricken completely. Uh, that was kind of at the recommendation of the superintendent, and that was kind of in conference with other and super so other superintendents and districts that have said, you know, for reasons both budgetary, um, with you know trying to help taxpayers as much as we can, and safety, you know, with not wanting the in-person meetings to be stretched out for hours and hours. People are trying to simplify their warrants as much as possible. Um, we felt as a board that most of those could go away. Um, there wasn't anything hugely significant other than that big 197.5 for the, the CIP type items. Um, that one did go away too. That passed on a 5-0 vote, but I would, I, you know, would re be remiss if I didn't mention that, that three of the five of us, you know, made mention that in any normal year, we would not have supported that going away. We felt strongly that um, that's, you know, in keeping with kind of the budget keeping that the town has suggested to us over the years, that the projects outlined that that money would be put into the reserve to fund over the next five to 10 years are important projects that are not going to go away. Um, so it was with <clears throat> trepidation that we voted to make that go away, but we did. Um, there was another warrant article, and I'll get the number wrong, um, but there was seventy thousand dollars, I believe, uh, taken out of the capital, the school building capital reserve fund for um, a roof, as well as some fire life safety stuff. There was a vote to reduce that down to fifteen, um, and the rationale behind that was that fifteen is is supposed to cover the fire life safety stuff, and in, in fact, I think we modified the language to reflect that. And kind of the underlying thing there is that it sounds like there's an appetite to spend the fifty-five to sixty thousand that was quoted to replace that section of roof from the surplus this year. Um, that's a piece of roof that is at Pembroke Academy that is actively failed, like to the point where when it rains, we've got buckets underneath it catching water. Um, so that's not a thing that can wait. So I think I think the general plan is. We're still looking at a pretty healthy surplus at this point, and that 60 to 70 or 50, 55 to 60, I'm sorry, could come out of there to get that done immediately. Um, so, again, a few smaller order, uh, articles went by the wayside. And then the other significant conversation is um, there was a reduction, I believe it was 334 
thousand seven hundred to um, our you know fund one operating budget as well. That was the list that I mentioned last time that was agreed upon or brought to us from Patty and the administration. Again, certainly want to say publicly that it is not an endorsement that those things were not needed or, or you know, we're not we're not happy about cutting those things. But we asked them to take a hard look at it. That's the stuff that they identified that that they would be comfortable with going away um, if it has to. That list, I'm sure, will be made public again. It's in it's in our minutes. It's in different places. Um, I'd encourage everybody to look at it just to know. You know, when I say there there are impacts from that, they're spelled out fairly clearly. I mean, there was you know fifteen thousand dollars for library books. I'm not sure if my wife, who is a school librarian in another district, has found out yet that I voted to cut money that would have library books in it. Um, hoping maybe she doesn't, but that's the kind of stuff. And you know, it's it's. You can say, oh, it's library books, and that, and we can do that next year. Um, but personally, since I've been involved, library books, science textbooks, some things, desks, some things like that, have we've said that every single year. Um, so again, just expressing the, the concern of kicking it down the road and, and the fear that if, if we don't take care of these things on a routine basis, there's going to come a time where things are actually in failure. Um, that was, you know, one of the big budget items in that 197.5 warrant article was a boiler. And if that go, you know, if that goes, we have to fix it. Um, and if that money is not all in the trust fund to take out, uh, we still have to fix it. So again, all these cuts were made with the idea that this is not an ordinary year. Um, we do have taxpayers in our town that are in bad financial shape and we want to do everything that we can. Um, to help with that. But again, there is some fear that some of these costs are not not going away just because we're not going to fund them. Um, so there's some total numbers, some final numbers in there. I think that you all have an updated copy of the tax impact sheet, at least with our changes. I don't think the stuff we just voted on for DPW is in there. Um, and then did you guys, I don't know if you can see this, uh, I got some I got some documentation from Amber here that should she wasn't able to join us tonight. But if you guys have questions, I think I should be able to hit most of them from her notes here. Um, I think the notable thing is if we're talking about, you know, the fund one budget, which does not include food service um, with the cuts that we voted in, the the money that we're asking for to run the district, the fund one money is up. I believe it's 0.82 percent over last year. Um, so of course there are revenue differences that make the amount that we're going to need from the taxpayers higher than it was last year. But for all intents and purposes, for the amount of money that the, the school is actually asking, this is what we need to run our schools. It's pretty darn close to flat at this point. Um, and you know, if you, as Clint mentioned last time, if you consider the raises for the teachers that were voted in by the town, as well as increases in retirement and um, health care, it, it's probably less than flat if you look at it that way. So again, then I guess the last piece that I would just mention, I kind of hit on it a little bit. Um, again, very early, I've said it every meeting, I think, but at last check, the surplus number was still um, over $900,000. So we talked a lot about that at the meeting as well and kind of what the plan is there. Um, you know, as we talked about in this in this meeting a week or two ago, the goal of having that surplus not be as hefty every year is a logical thing to take a look at. Um, part of the reason it is so this year is that we as a board and Patty as the superintendent way back end of August, early September, completely froze the budget. Um, there have not been purchases made this year other than absolute necessities. And so, you know, that leads to a large surplus. Um, we did approve a few weeks ago, a punch list of things that Josh felt, um, Mr. Coughlin felt were of the utmost importance that totaled like $118,000. I think I, I brought that to you guys. Um, but there, we're still looking at close to a million dollars of surplus right now. And I think there, I think it's fair to say there was an appetite by a majority of the board that if we get to, May, June timeframe, and we're still looking at something in that sort of range that we would want to return a hefty sum 
you know, whether it be five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars to offset taxes, but that there would be an appetite to use some of that, as I mentioned, to get that roof replaced um, and do some of the more immediate projects that may have been in that Warren article or that may have been scheduled to be done this year in the budget, but didn't happen because of the freeze or whatever. Um, so we're hoping there's enough money to do both, both return a large chunk to, to bring that tax rate down, as well as accomplish some things that we see as kind of urgent issues. Um, I think that kind of sums it up. If there's any questions, I'll do what I can. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we'll open up for questions. Andy, could you give a fairly good rundown on what in the fund one budget that you cut besides library books? Uh, I think I can. Give me a second to find that in my email. Thank you. Okay, I've got it. I'm going to switch over to that screen so I won't be able to see it. But um, let's see here. So there was, uh, we talked last time, um, there were both, there was both a little bit of an error found and as well as a sta um, some staff cuts for food service that totaled a little over 53,000. Um, there's 31,000 in there for asbestos abatement, a wa some water fountains and a sink. That's obviously one of the ones that we would be looking at using some of that surplus money to take care of the asbestos abatement. Um, you know, Josh, as I'm sure you can guess, it's not flaking as as best it's as floating through the air or anything. So it's not a hundred percent emergency. Um, but one, at least one board member did mention that would be a t uh, priority. Um, $16,000 for a backstop and some other sports stuff. Um, another 44,000 for asbestos abatement in another school, as well as air conditioning replacements and water fountains. Um, at Pembroke Academy specifically uh, from their budget line. So those three, I'm sorry, those three were from the facilities budget lines. From Pembroke Academy's budget, there is uh, replacement computer equipment that totaled just shy of 82,000. The rationale there, I believe, is that we were able to use some of the CARES money for towards technology um, because we, we, I'm not sure if it was mandated, but at least we felt like if we're going to have our kids all be remote, they all need to have a device and we need to provide that for them. Um, so we were able to, to buy a lot of Chromebooks with that. So I think that we can push our replacement cycle a little bit. Um, that may get interesting down the road because if we, you know, if we bought 200 devices or whatever it was and they all start to die in the same year, eh, we're going to have to get creative. But for now, we can push that off a little bit. Um, $2,500 worth of library books, $1,000 in just professional books. Uh, almost three grand in um, replacing furniture and fixtures, um, $2,500 in special education supplies. At Three Rivers specifically, um, there's $3,200 that just says general supplies, um, $33,000 and change for, again, computer equipment replacement, $500 of office supplies, $7,000 from field trip lines, $5,000 for replacement furniture. Um, $500 from speech supplies, $500 from curriculum development stipend. And then I didn't get an updated copy of this at Hill. Um, they just listed approximately $50,000 of cuts, but I, I don't have the details for Hill School. Thank you, Andy. That's, that'll do. All right, Karen. Oh, thanks, Mark. Um, well, first of all, Andy and Patty, I wanted to thank you for um, the effort in pulling together some um, options for reducing the budget this year. Um, it was done in an expeditious manner. I really appreciate that effort. I know that's not easy to do. So thank you for that. Um, my and I don't mean to sound ungrateful of the reductions that you propose. I just want to I just want to share some concerns um, about the reductions, um, specifically with the Warren articles. Um, it, to me, my opinion on those on those as the focus of the cuts 
Um, it's really not a spending reduction. It's really, to me, it represents a spending deferral because um, all of that stuff needs to be done at some point and we're just kind of pushing it off. Not, we're just not gonna do it this year. So in my mind, when we were talking the past couple of meetings about reducing um, the budget, the school budget, I guess what I had in mind and perhaps I wasn't very articulate about it was um, some spending that's going to be um, sustainable um, down the road, not just pushing off spending. Um, and when we started talking about ideas, you know, what, what are you thinking? Where are you, what kind of lines are you looking at? Um, my suggestion was looking at uh, resources and is there any opportunity to cut um, staffing resources, reduce staffing resources? Now, I've been going to the school board meetings. I haven't attended all of them, but I've attended a lot of them. And I don't recall hearing any just any long discussions about staff reductions in the meetings that I attended. And granted, maybe I missed those discussions in the meetings that I didn't. Um, but we did propose them here at budget. I know maybe there was an other 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 budget committee that members that perhaps suggested that might be a good place to look. So in this past discussion, I didn't I didn't attend this meeting either. This past school board meeting, was there any discussion about reducing staff? Uh, not very in depth. I did bring back the as the three major talking points from this committee that I recognize uh, as staff um, as the the size of that one warrant article um and and the size of the annual surplus and trying to reduce that um and i did introduce those three points to the board um they kind of opened it up for discussion and nobody kind of clung on to that as as a talking point i guess um i can't speak for Patty and the administration as to whether or not that's something that they've looked at closely, but it wasn't spoken. It wasn't spoken in depth at the board meeting. Yeah, just a follow up, Mark. That's okay. Um, so just a reminder, the the request um, that I had put, it's in the meeting minutes as well, was that taking a look at um, about 14 positions where there might be some opportunity to re reduce staff. Um, and I remember talking about, you know, that might be the extreme end and the other extreme end is doing nothing to reduce staff. And it sounds like we're still at doing nothing. And I was hoping maybe for something in the middle. Um, again, you know, bump, we have nine classrooms that are at an average of 60 students per class right now. The, the, the bumping that up to 21 has the opportunity to eliminate nine teachers. Um, we talked about multiple librarians in one school, maybe reducing that down to one. We talked about multiple music teachers in one school, maybe reducing that down to one. Um, uh, technology specialists, there's a two to three in one school, maybe reducing that down to one or two. Uh, seven administrative assistants and um, over at PA, maybe getting that a little bit more efficient, maybe removing a couple of those. Um, those are. Those are the kinds of spending uh, reductions that I was thinking about that are lasting. It's not just deferring the spending to something else, but lasting cuts in our budget um, that we can kind of count on going forward. So that was it, Mark. Thank you. Sure. Um, if if I, I, I sympathize and I agree that finding those types of cuts is going to have much more of a lasting effect than some of these things that are kind of annual. Um, and I do think that eventually looking at the Hill School um, as class sizes drop, um, there's the ability there because those are contained classrooms that if we lost a teacher or two, um, you know, you could still shift them between the grade levels, right? If there was a bigger third grade class, you could use a, a person there and have less at second grade if that's the way the numbers worked out. I just wanted to touch on a couple of the points you made. Um, I think Mark started to kind of explain the grade five through eight teachers last time, and I'm not sure if he was clear, but I, I just wanted to say publicly that uh, when we suggest we might be able to reduce class size there, um, that's not feasible at all. Those aren't classrooms like you would think of at the Hill School where they all kind of do the same thing. At grades five through eight, we have a math class and a social studies class and a history class. And if you remove one of those teachers, you're effectively removing that subject. So even if the numbers drop, 
you still have to teach all of those subjects, obviously. So those that's a it's just pointing out the difference between the middle school and the elementary school. Um, the multiple librarians, I thought we had talked about this last time. That's a typo in the in the document. That school has one librarian and one technology integrator. Um, we don't have two librarians at that school. And then as far as the tech specialist, um, and again, I think I know we talked about this last time, but I'm not sure. I don't think I was the one that explained it. So I just wanted to clarify a little more. One of those positions is a technology integrator. And what that is, is, is a certified teacher um, that pushes into the classroom and assists the classroom teachers with bringing technology into learning and showing kids how to do things um, via a computer and how maybe if they're a student that doesn't really enjoy writing, um, how they can express their essay or their thesis or whatever in a PowerPoint form or in um, some video mechanism. So that's a technology integrator. The other two technology positions are not teaching positions. Those are just the behind the scenes tech guys where if somebody's computer breaks, they're the guys that show up and fix it. I shouldn't say guys. I'm not sure if they're male or female, but very different thing. Those are not faculty um, type positions. They're just our technology staff. And those resources are shared between buildings. So um, again, I, I think there is some wiggle room to look at that. Personally, I didn't feel comfortable you know, kind of doing that at this point, um, I guess, quickly, if you want to say, not that we couldn't have thought of that months ago, but um, as a suggestion from the NBC, with a couple of weeks to deal with it, I certainly wouldn't want to be rash and start cutting positions. But I will say it's coming up, springtime's coming up, and we're at the point in a, a month or so where we look at the, the rosters more closely and we decide who's going to get contracts and who's not and things like that. So um, I will definitely bring it to my board to see if there's any appetite there to, to take a look at those things, um, take a look at the numbers projected for um, enrollment numbers in the coming years, and, and we can definitely further that conversation. I think that's a responsible thing to do. All right, Jerry. Yeah, Andy, I, I do have a question that uh, I, I don't expect you to have the answer right off the top of your head, but if you could do an inquiry uh, for me. Uh, you mentioned asbestos uh, abatement, and asbestos has not been built into any new construction in decades. Uh, from when I was on the school board decades ago, uh, I recall that asbestos existed in only a couple of places in the school. One of them was in the 1957 wing down at High Street, and we don't have that building anymore. The other was in the floor tiles. That it's a it's a fact that if you've got a very old floor with nine by nine tiles that they contain asbestos, anything that twelve by twelve was asbestos free, and there was a replacement policy at the time that as long as you didn't replace more than a certain number of those nine by nine tiles, you didn't have to have the moon suit people come in. I don't know how far that got, but I can recall the last time walking through the 1964 wing at Pembroke Academy, it still had nine by nine tiles. So if we're talking about replacing floor tiles, I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, if we're talking about something that's uh, built into the walls or can get into the air systems, uh, that, that has a, a different uh, level of urgency. So if you could find that out for us exactly, where is this asbestos? Because we've built additions at the Hill uh, Pembroke Academy, we built the entire Three Rivers School. I don't think there's a gram of asbestos in any of those new construction projects. I just would like to know where this is. Sure thing. Sure. I'll take that back. I, I'm 95% sure that he has mentioned some floor tiles. Not sure what building. Um, I do know, I'm not sure if I brought this up to you guys or not. Um, I think that I'm, I think the belief is still that this is not going to be uh, expenditure on our part, so it shouldn't hit our surplus number. But there was a problem recently at Pembroke Academy where um, there was a leak of some sort. I can't remember if it was a toilet. I think it was a water fountain. Um, the leak was identified. It was cleaned up. Everybody thought everything was okay. Over the break, I believe the Christmas break, um, they saw some glue seeping up from between some floor tiles outside of the gymnasium area. And when they kind of dug in there, they realized it wasn't localized it had spread in quite a bit of a uh, area so they shut the water off they started pulling up tile luckily it didn't get underneath into the gym floor because that's the expensive one 
Um, but I believe the, the thought right now, and sorry, I know this isn't what you asked, Jerry, I'm off topic, but I thought you guys might be interested. Um, I believe that the thought is that it's going to be covered by insurance. So it shouldn't hit our, it shouldn't hit our budget. Um, I don't know if that has anything to do with the asbestos stuff or not, if they ripped up more tiles than they needed to or, or whatever, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, yes, I'll get you an answer on that. Dave. Thank you, Mark. <clears throat> and um, Andy, I, I do want to express my appreciation for what you've done over the past week. I, I said last week I um, wasn't comfortable where things were with the, with the budget. And I know how difficult <clears throat> it is to go back uh, and look for cuts. And frankly, I'm not that interested in trying to uh, uh, tell you how to do it, where to do it. I think I have confidence that the school board and the administration knows what they're doing in terms of running the operation and making decisions that are in the best interests of the students. Uh, and I think you've done that. And um, uh, I think it's a, you've done a great job in, in coming back with a budget that's almost flat. I, um, I'm frankly very surprised you're able to do that, but uh, you've, you've you've met the expectations that I had, and I um, I appreciate that a lot. Uh, and uh, if you pass that on to the board and the administration for me, I'd appreciate that too. Thanks. Yeah, if I could just respond real quickly. Um... I got to give Patty a ton of the credit on that. Um, obviously the board voted it in and accepted it all, but Patty was at obviously this meeting when she first presented the budget or when we first presented the budget, uh, we had a school board meeting the following Tuesday. She had already met with the administration on that Monday, already expressed to them that we need to make some cuts. And she came prepared with that entire list of three thirty four seven. Um, they spent half a day and banged it out and, the board really didn't do ha have to do much work other than other than take a look at it. So Patty was really on the ball with that one. Other comments or questions? Peter. Yeah, I, I want to uh, just get back to uh, what uh, Karen was talking about in uh, staff reductions. And Andy, you said that there wasn't an appetite to uh, to look at this type of a reduction. Now, the money is being, the ta it's taxpayer money that's being spent. Now, if we're down at around 16 average for, per class, and if we brought it up to let's say 22, 21, and, and there was a nine person reduction, which would be a considerable sum of money, uh, you still have wiggle room because every year, the student population has been going down and the budget has been going up. So now if you're at 22 and you have three classes, you're, you're able to add six students before you get to 25 in each of the, each of the classes. So I think we're, we're, this is a disservice to the taxpayer that we're not doing, we're not, we're not in the business of keeping people in jobs or creating jobs that they're not going to be doing. So I really think that it's not a question of appetite of doing this. This is your job. Sure, I, I, I get where you're coming from. Again, I would caution that nine positions is not, in, if we're talking about K through eight, which I think is where the nine comes from, one from each grade, that can't be done in the middle school without just not having history. Okay, well, but at the, but at the elementary school, school at the elementary school, you're right, and I see where you're coming from. Um, and and I don't I don't want to get into an argument with you. And I think it's slightly off topic of you know the number we've presented a number tonight. But I will say that there is a discussion to be had there. It's not as cut and dry as going to 21 or 22 kids is fine. Um, obviously, we've approved new developments to come into the school. We've had very recently, last year in kindergarten and second grade, I believe. We had the numbers of enrollment increase uh, by eight or nine kids in the first three weeks. Um, and if that happens and you've only got a six kid buffer and you try to hire a teacher two weeks after school starts, you're not getting the good teachers. 
Um, so, so, I mean, that's a particular concern. And also, and this is a personal note, um, and, and certainly I'm sure there are people in town that have another opinion, and I respect that. But personally, um, I, I've grown up around teachers. My wife's a teacher. Both of my in-laws were teachers for 35 years. Um, I Getting closer, significantly closer, to what the state says is the maximum allowed kids in a classroom, um, you know, 16 is low. I, I will grant you that. But if the option is to remove one teacher and put that number to 21 or 22, personally, I'm not comfortable with that number. Um, if we're if we're saying that 25 is the absolute maximum the state says is allowed, I don't feel like Pembroke should be the school that kind of cheaps out and says, we'll, we'll do bare minimum. That's just not my philosophy on how our schools should run. If that number was 19, cool. Um, but when you get to 21, 22 kids, it's, I don't believe that's optimal learning. So again, that's only my opinion. I'm sure there are people on the board with me that would have other opinions. And I, I, will, I will say, same thing I said to Karen, um, I'm happy to take that, those elementary school positions back to the board and take a look at them. Um, I, think, I think it's responsible to have that conversation. Can I, one more, one more point? Uh, you know, I've been self-employed and employer for many, many years. And I could tell you the worst part of that job is when you have to lay somebody off or fire them. And I can appreciate that it's very tough for the five board members to say, hey, we need to cut people. It's the worst thing in the world. It's sleepless nights, and it doesn't sit well with you for a long time. At some point, you have to draw the line in the sand and say that 16 is too low and we really need to do something about this. Uh, Karen, then Clint, then Jane. I'll defer. I'm all set. Thanks, Mark. Uh, and Clint. Uh, I'd, I'd like to reiterate what um, Andy said earlier. Every time there's an opening down the road, the board and in my 24 years on the board, we continued to look at whether or not we needed to replace that teacher. And there were a number of times, and I think, Jerry, you can attest to that, where when somebody retired, and we won't find that out oftentimes until very close to the end of the budget process, or in sometimes even later than that, we would decide whether or not we needed to replace that teacher. And many times we didn't. So the board makes that decision as the occasions occur, as well as dealing with a decision that's a more global decision as to what the number of desired pupils per classroom should be, particularly in the self-contained classrooms, which are the K-4 classrooms. So. Uh, to assume that the board isn't paying attention to it, in my experience, they're always paying attention to it. Because you're right, personnel costs drive the budget, but personnel costs cannot always save the budget. Uh, Gene. I don't know why my hand's up, sorry. <laughs> I, I think I thought I saw your, your you do this with your hand. Okay. All right. Um, Jerry. Yeah, uh, I just want to put my two cents in on uh, trying to take the total number of students and divide them by a number of rooms and assign a teacher to each room. Uh, I think uh, I don't like the idea that you don't have uh, more than a certain number of students in a class. And I think if you get looking at 16, it's a long ways from 21. But I think that misses the point. It's not how many students do you have in that class. It's which students you have in that class. There are, if you get the perfect 21, they're going to march in there like troopers, and they're going to be attentive to what that instructor is saying. But there are others. It's like throwing a match into a pail of gasoline. It's a, they're everywhere. And the teacher is going to be really challenged getting them to learn. So if you've got a, a class with 21 and three of them are powder kegs, that's a whole different situation. 
you almost have to understand the nature of each, the makeup of each classroom and the skill sets required of particular teachers. This is not a cookie cutter situation where you simply divide the number of students by the number of, of teachers and allocate it uh, that way. It, you can do it, but you know what you're gonna get? You're gonna get really crummy education because the ones that are there to learn are gonna be disrupted by the ones that are uh, disrupting things and the teachers really are somewhat powerless to do that. It's not like you can say, oh, you're a disruptive kid. We're going to throw you out of school. You're not allowed to do that kind of thing. So we not, here, where we're looking at the dollars and cents, we're not in a position to evaluate that. There has to be a level of trust. And from coming from me, that's a difficult statement to make. <laughs> um, Peter, can I ask you to go back on mute? Because I think we're getting some feedback. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Karen. Just a response uh, to the implementation of uh, moving towards a more efficient um, budget. I just, I think the, the purview of this committee um, is to, to look at the information that's pre presented to us, the data that's presented to us um, and evaluate it on an, an from an economic perspective from a budget perspective in balancing all of the variables that we have in front of us to try and understand what's the best decision for the town. Um, the school board and the school SAU, their mission to figure out what's best for the students and the teachers. Um, and we're, we're here, we're, we're missioned to figure out what's the best solution uh, for the town from a, a budget perspective. Um, and, um, the, the, the data that we're looking at, um, we see reductions in enrollment consistently year after year. We're not seeing our staff reductions keep up with that at all. As I mentioned, it's not being discussed at the board meetings at all. I attend them. It's not being discussed. Um, so I, I think that there is some, some opportunity there to, to, to bring in some real um, uh, sustainable reductions in our school. And you know what happens when we do that is when we have the right amount of teachers teaching our kids, we can pay them what they should be paid. Um, we've got an overabundance of teachers. We've got 16 kids in a classroom when we should be really looking at 20. We, you could argue that we've got more teachers that we need, and I would argue that, that we do have more teachers that we need. And in that, it's more difficult to pay them a, a good wage. I would rather see uh, 20 kids in a class and pay those teachers so we can go get good teachers in those classrooms who can handle those public education challenges of the variation of students that they're forced to teach. Um, but when you when you have too many and uh, you know we're just going to be restricted by what we can pay. So I'd rather pay more teacher uh, less teachers better pay have a, a better balanced distribution of children in the classroom um and in the long run i think that helps every everyone i think it helps the, the students i think it helps the teachers i think it helps uh the community as a whole and parents who are paying the taxes ultimately okay so i think you know we've heard from a number of folks brian uh, something Jerry said, he, he used the word trust, and um, I've been thinking about that term relative to these changes. I know we went through a few rough years where there was a very low level of trust between boards, between the boards and the town, um, and I feel like we've been moving beyond that. Uh, Jerry mentioned it in terms of staff management, and particular the managing staff is something that's best done and most easily done if you do it over a longer term rather uh, with a single budget but there's a couple other items where um, i think trust between the boards is going to be important this year this is a difficult year to predict the budget we don't know for the the time that this budget's in effect we're not sure what things are going to go back to normal or continue to be different. But most importantly, I think we should remember 
there's a number potentially bigger than the cut that's been offered so far that's going to be there in surplus, we hope, um, for the budget that's coming to an end now. And we also hope, uh, very difficult to predict, but that there's a potential for surplus in the next budget that could be of a similar magnitude. And so those numbers are each as big as the kind of cuts we're talking about. And if we don't have the trust between the boards to manage that, if we encourage the town meeting to lop off an extra big chunk of money from the operating budget, it may just come out of the um, surplus because that's within the purview of the board to do it. Um, so I, I'm not sure this is a recommendation for, for taking one action or the other, but it's a reminder that if we go into a, a town meeting um, where we're butting heads with each other, we may not get the result that any of us want. Thank you. Um, Andy, did you want to? Sure, yes, if I could. Um, here, I'll put my hand down first. I just wanted to thank Brian very much for recognizing that. Um, you know, both of us, both of these boards talk a lot about working together. And that's a particular concern of mine when it comes to working together is, um, you know, I think we all agree that trying to get that surplus to be a more reasonable number so that we can budget better uh, is advantageous. And I plan to work in that direction. Um, but I, I think that it would help us immensely if the, if the municipal budget committee would recognize that fact at the public hearing and at the town meeting um, that the surplus is a significant part of this equation. Um, because like you said, at this point, it's, it's looking like it will be even bigger than the cuts that we made today. And when you're talking about three quarters of a million dollars, that's going to have a, a possibly a four or more percent impact on the overall tax rate. I mean, that's enormous. Um, and so it's tough because we have to go by the numbers that the state says we have to go by and the tax impact sheet has to be calculated the way it has to be calculated. And it's going to show whatever it shows right now is 8.2%. Um, and of course I can't guarantee you a number for surplus that's going to be returned, but I think we can all look at what the surplus is now. And I ask Amber every meeting that we have is anything big going on. It's going to hurt that number. And she says, no, but it's still early. I, I think it would be, great if we could both recognize at the public hearing and at the meetings that that's going to be a significant chunk of money that is going to drastically change that number that's on the tax impact sheet. And I think it's something that was really lost last year um, because that was a very big number last year on that sheet. And when we look back now and the tax rate is set, the actual increase was, I believe, 4.6%. And that's still a decent chunk of change. But I saw people on Facebook today claiming that last year the tax rate went up over 13%. And it's simply not true. And it sounded like it could be true last year at the meeting. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm rambling. But Brian, I appreciate you bringing that up. I think it's a, a very important point. Um, and I do intend, other than a couple of very important projects like that roof, to try to push my board and my administration to return as much money as we possibly can to make, make this coming year better, hopefully. Um, has anybody that has not put forth some uh, sentiment or comments, um, would anybody else like to make any comments? I'm kind of sensing we're sort of winding up and moving towards, uh, heading towards the warrant here. Mike. I just wanted to commend um, the, the uh, school board for the actions that they've taken. Uh, at a couple of meetings ago, I think one of the first ones I'd recommended some reductions around 600,000 or so. And I appreciate your efforts to get this number down to something that I can support and that I think that our taxpayers can support. And I thank you for your efforts. And uh, I, I plan on supporting this, this revised budget. Thank you. Any other comments? Jerry. 
Are we uh, are we discussing just the the main money warrant article, or are we also considering some of the other articles? So right now, this is open discussion. Um, so if there's questions on anything, we certainly you know uh, can cover them. Um, you know, we'll obviously start voting on the specific articles. Uh, sounds like fairly soon. But if you've got a question, get it out on the table. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm specifically concerned with. Uh, with Article Six, uh, what to create a, a, a vehicle expendable trust? Uh, that may sound uh, odd coming from me because that article exists because uh, in my role as a trustee of trust funds, I recommended that the article be created. Uh, what bothers me, and the reason I cannot support that article as written, is because it makes the school board agent to expend. If you look at the other articles where we're replacing. Uh, vehicles, whether it's for the fire department or the police department or the town, the the selectmen are not agents to expend. You don't wake up one morning and say, oh, I need to buy a pickup truck today and go out and buy it. But the way that warrant article is written, it's exactly what you could do. The voters should have a second bite at that apple. And, and you don't suddenly need a pickup truck. You know that's coming. You could put it on the warrant and let the voters decide whether it merits being done. So, uh, as written, I can't support that article. If it were amended so that uh, you had to go back to the next school district meeting to spend the funds, I, I have no problem with the creation of the trust. I have no problem with putting more money into it. But when you create the trust and you make the school board agents to expend, it's inconsistent with the rest of the way we do it for the town of Pembroke. And for that reason, I, I would be opposed on Article 6. Andy. Thanks, Jerry. I will take the blame for that one. I have that underlined with your name on it in my binder, um, and I just failed to mention that at the meeting. So I will definitely bring that up. I know it's too late and we need to vote on it tonight. And, and if you vote opposed, I understand, completely understand. I will um, ask if there's any reason why they did that. Um, I'll talk to the attorney if I need to. And if we can get that changed, if, if it makes sense to the school to, to make that change, I will have it changed um, before we get these published. I'll, I'll text Patty tonight and let her know. Um, but uh, yeah, my my fault. Anything else? Are we ready to start working on the warrant, Paul? Thank you. Um, I I, I want to echo the it seems to be to me a change in the trust uh, between boards from last year to this year. I think it is better this year than it was last year. So I first want to say that. Um, the question that I have is one of the things you said earlier, Andy, uh, you're cutting back uh, or recommending cutting back one of the warrant articles, uh, the large ones, to save money on the budget. And I think it was specifically regarding the potential replacement of the roof. And on one side, you said we're going to cut back the warrant, you know, the, the, the money going for the warrant article. But if we have to replace the roof, we'll just return less of a surplus. Well, to me, if you take it off on one side, but simply return less of a surplus on the other side, we really haven't cut anything. So, you know, that's, uh, I, I can appreciate the sentiment. I do believe there's, uh, you know, a, a better working relationships this year, but I still don't see that as a real cut in the budget. Thank you. Andy. Yep, I, I hear you. Um, I think, and, and I might have this wrong. Someone could correct me if I have it wrong. That that article, because it was drawing out of a trust to pay for that, um, so we would have funded that that trust fund with the big, the 197.5, and then the separate article for the 70K to pull out of that trust fund would have actually paid for that project. So I think that that 70 um, would actually have been on the revenue side, or maybe on both sides, Jerry can probably tell me for sure. Um, so you're right, that's not really truly making impact on the budget. And and again, my intention, um, and this is just me, not my board, but my intention is to return as much as we can, but we do feel we have some immediate needs that have to be addressed for safety. Uh, Jerry, I still see your hand up. I don't know if that's a what, okay, it's down now. Uh, actually, I did have a, a comment on, on the budget and on the surplus. Uh, if you look at the million dollars that Andy is talking about having in surplus 
and you look at a $27 million budget, you, what you're talking about for a surplus is about 3%. So if you gave somebody a dollar and you said, uh, run your operation with this dollar, and they came back at the end of the period, so we had three cents left over, you would pat them on the back and say, wow, you did a pretty good job. You operated that really, really tight. But with a big number, like 27 million, when you take 3% of it, you end up with a million bucks and every a million dollars looks like a lot of money to anybody that I know. And so that that makes the decision even more difficult. So, you know, I'm inclined to support what you've got at this point. I applaud some of the, the cuts that you made. Those were not easy decisions. And uh, I, I think I'm ready to go ahead and support the budget as you're requesting it. Clint. I think one of the things I would like to do is, is, is also commend the school board for doing what they've done. I think they've done uh, a, a good job in getting us down to the numbers that were talked about in the last couple of weeks. I don't want people, and I want this in the minutes, I don't want people to put out of their mind the fact that one of the reasons we're in this problem with respect to our uh, tax rate is the state reneging on over $800,000 worth of revenue. We're concentrating on the expenditures and that's perfectly normal, but you cannot ignore the revenue side and that large chunk of change coming out of the budget process from the state is one of the reasons we're all in this situation to begin with. All right. Anyone else? I'm, I, I'm sensing. I think we're ready to start working on the warrant articles. Do folks agree? Okay. Um, what I'm going to suggest is that we start and we work backwards, and we'll save the we'll save the big number for we'll save Article Two for last because um, that's where there may be some some more discussion or what have you. So let's um, so let's work backwards. Um, so we're going to start with article number seven, um, which is to see if the Pembroke School District will contingent upon passage of article six, vote to raise an appropriate sum of 32,500 to be added to vehicle expendable trust fund previously established. Come from June 30th, unassigned fund balance for transfer. Is there a motion to, ex to support? So moved. So, moved. <clears throat> so we got uh, Andy and uh, Dave. Discussion, questions. Jerry, then Karen. Just a comment. I would find it a lot easier to support this article if the one that comes before it didn't have the school board as agents to expend. Karen. Um, that was my comment as well. Thank you, Mark. So, yeah, we, we've heard from Andy and, uh, you know, if this, uh, we, we can, we can talk around this if need be at public hearing. If, for example, um, we vote to not support this. And if that is the consensus reason, then, you know, if that's being changed, we can talk to it. We should be able to work around it. Um, any other comment? Okay, then I'll start the voting with Karen. No. no. Armand. No. Brian. No. Paul. No. Peter. No. Jerry. I'm going to vote yes. Okay, uh, Dave. Yes. Mike. Yes. Clint. Yes. And Andy. Yes. Okay, so I got five yeses and one, two, three, four, five no's. Huh. Well, I guess that puts it up to me then. That's what I was about to say. The chair gets to break the tie. Wow, I think this is the first time in all in, in like 
13 years that I've had to break a tie. Um, I'm going to vote yes. And I'm going to vote yes because I think it'll be, I, I'm voting yes in the spirit of, of, of the expectation that the wording will get changed um, for when this is, well, for when this is final. So that's my expectation. So, um, so we have voted to uh, support this um, six to five. All right, article number six, see if the school board will vote to establish the vehicle expendable trust fund under the provision of RSA 198 colon 20 dash C for the purposes of purchasing, replacing or repairing school district vehicles, raise an appropriate sum of $20,000 to be placed in the fund and further to appoint the Pembroke school board as agents to expend from this fund. Is there a motion to support? Dave, is there a second? Second. And that was Clint. Okay. Um, Jerry? Yeah, I'm I'm troubled again by the something else I just noticed on this warrant article. It says majority vote. I don't believe that under trust law, a majority vote is sufficient to change the purpose uh, or uh, uh, anything like that. I, I, it might require a, a two thirds vote. Uh, council for the school district ought to look, look at that closely. Uh, it just means you got to have a 66% vote in order to uh, to, uh, to move the, the, the money over. It's it's kind of tantamount to changing the purpose of a trust. So bottom line, Jerry, what your what your what your positioning is, this should just get set up the way we've always set up all the others for the most part that we've set up in town with similar verbiage and stuff. Correct. Well, it's the, the important this distinction there is that they want to create the initial funding by taking money out of another existing fund. So it, it has all of the appearances of discontinuing part of a fund to create another, and that's why you might need a supermajority vote on it. Uh, but uh, um, my apologies for just noticing that now. Uh, if if we were going to do something like that, you would need to have that that super majority vote in order to change the purpose of it, whether in the eyes of DRA or anybody else, what you're really doing when you move between uh, accounts is to do a partial discontinuation. I don't know, but it would be better to, to make sure that the, we have the answer to that correct before it comes up to, to the, uh, the voters. Thank you. Other comments or discussion? Uh, Dave. So, um, Andy, you said you're going to go back and try to get this all cleaned up in the manner that Jerry was uh, talking about, correct? Okay, thanks. Yes, sir. Uh, Jane. Yeah, I just saw uh, Dave Jodwin popped up in chat. He may have something to say on this topic concerning Jerry's concerns. David, go right ahead. I just said Jerry was correct. Okay, thank you. All right, so we'll look for some changes here, but obviously we're stuck in the meantime. We've got to vote tonight. Um, and then we can... You know, we'll we'll have the chance to revisit this, I believe, in our meeting following the public hearing. If that's changed, we can then re, you know, we'll re-vote again on all these things. And so we can we can change things at that point if needed. But I think at this point we're ready to take the vote on number six as it's stated, as it's written at this point. So uh Andy. Yes. yes. Clint. Yes. Mike. Yes. Dave. Yes. Jerry. In the interest of trust, yes. Peter. Yes. Paul. Yes. Brian. I'll say no to be consistent. Uh, Armand. Armand. 
Armand, if you're talking, well, you're on mute. Armin, are you still there? Okay, perhaps he stepped away. Uh, Karen. No, no. Okay, and I'll come back to Armin again. Armin, once again, if you're if you're saying anything, we're not able to hear you. Okay, so I've got two no's. Um, seven yeses and i guess i'm going to have to consider armand an, an, an abstention okay so we have voted to support number six and again in the spirit of the verbiage being changed all right, continuing to work backwards, number five, to see if the Pembroke School District will vote to raise an appropriate sum of $15,000 for the purpose of fire life safety items with said funds to come from the school building capital reserve fund previously established for these purposes. Is there a motion to support? So moved. Uh, who is that, Clint? Yep. Okay, is there a second? Second. Dave is seconded. Any, uh, any comments? Questions? Karen. Um, yeah, I just wanted to confirm the account value um, balance. I'm looking on page 53. I, I'm seeing $170,000 in that account. Is that correct? Give me a minute. Sorry, I, missed, I, can but... a, I can give yes. you the, the December 31 balance if you get, give me a second. Or Andy, do you have it? Because I think I sent it to you. Um. I can check. I've I've got the binder in front of me, and I did what I can say um, is I asked Amber about that number while we were discussing these word articles on Tuesday night, and she said it was accurate. Um, but I'll see if I can find the email Jerry's talking about too. So one seventy uh, one seventy nine thirty three is the balance about somewhere in there, Andy. On on page fifty three, it's in yes. In there. Okay, thanks. Yep. Actually, one hundred and seventy-two thousand nine hundred fifty-two dollars and three cents. Thank you. And I just realized I was on mute, so sorry about that. <laughs> um, doesn't look like there's any other questions. I don't think. Not seeing any other hands here. So okay, so we're going to vote on number five. Uh, so Karen. No. No. Uh, Armand. No, and I'm sorry I got knocked off the. Uh... For a while, I have to get back on. Okay, uh, Brian. Yes. Paul. Yes. Peter. Yes. Jerry. Yes. Dave. Yes. Mike. Yes. Clint. Yes. Andy. Yes. Okay, so I have eight yeses and two noes. So the committee has voted to support that. Mark, you're not voting. That's right, I'm not. Um, I, I, as chair, I reserve the right to only vote um, in, in the case of a tiebreaker. Perfect, thanks. Sure, I was just gonna answer your question because I did see it in chat. Um, that's why I was, I was joking. That was the first vote I've ever taken as a chair of the budget committee. And I can't even count how many years. <laughs> um, so let's do number four, excuse me, let's do number three and then number four. Probably makes a little more logical sense. So number three, <coughs> excuse me. See if the Pembroke School District will vote to approve the cost item set forth in the collective bargaining agreement between the school board and Pembroke Support Staff Association for the 2021-22. 22, 23, and 23, 24 fiscal years 
Cost of the following estimated increase in salaries and benefits at the current staffing level. 2021, 99,675 and 28 cents. 2022, 23, $73,093 and 54 cents. And 23, 24, 66,735 and 73 cents. And to further raise and appropriate the sum of 99,675 and 28 cents for the 21, 22 fiscal year, with such sum representing the additional costs attributable to the increases in salaries and benefits required by the new agreement over those that would be paid at current staffing levels. Is there a motion to support? So moved. That was Clint. Is there a second? second. Uh, Andy? Okay. Uh, any discussion? Questions or discussion? All right, not seeing any hands up. We'll go for the vote. So we'll start with Andy. Yes. Clint. Yes. Mike. Yes. Dave. Yes. P Jerry. Yes. Peter. Yes. Paul. No. Brian. Yes. Armand. No. Karen. Yes. Okay, so again, I have that as eight, uh, yes to no. So the committee will support number three. We'll now go to number four to see if the Pembroke School District, if Article Three is defeated, will authorize. Oh no, we don't. We don't have to vote. This is there's no dollars and cents associated with this, so we don't have to do anything with this one. Which brings us then to Article Number Two. See if the Pembroke School District will vote to raise and appropriate the Budget Committee's recommended amount of the support of schools for the payment of salaries. Uh, school district officials and agents and payment for statutory obligations in the district. This article does not include appropriations voted under work articles. The school board recommends 27 million 474 679. Um, Looking at the tax impact sheet, trying to figure out why this is. Oh, yeah, yeah, the appropriations. Yeah, sorry. Um, so at this point, um, motion to support and if there's any adjustment, any deliberation on the amounts here. So moved. So Jerry uh, has moved. Uh, Clint, I think I'll take yours as a second. Okay. Yep. Discussion. Obviously, we had a fair amount of it a little bit earlier, so. Okay, then I guess we'll go right ahead to the vote. And I'm gonna start at the bottom of the list. So, Karen? No. Armand? No. Brian? Yes. Paul? No. Peter? No. Jerry? Yes. Dave. Yes. Mike. Yes. Clint. Yes. Andy. Yes. Okay, so we have six to four, so the committee has voted to support. Okay. So I think that takes care of our uh, all our Warren articles and our votes for the evening. Um, let's see, other business. So I mentioned earlier we need to the tax impact sheet will get updated to reflect the uh, the, the the town contract there, um, and uh, our recommended amounts will go in. Um, they will be a match of the school in town because we voted to support everything uh, as the selectmen and school board have uh, have proposed. Um, so next week will be our public hearing. Um, following the public hearing, as we have done historically, I don't know if you did it the last couple of years, but we will hold a, 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 a committee meeting following the hearing 
Um, we will stick with the same WebEx. We'll just kind of continue. We'll give our chance for people to drop off and then we'll pick up and we'll hold a meeting um, to do some further deliberations if we feel comfortable uh, and ready to make final decisions and recommendations. We can do it uh, that night. If not, we would have one more opportunity the following Thursday, which would be the February 11th, to uh, make final final recommendations that would then go on further to town and school district meeting. Um, so our agenda for the fourth would be um, following the public hearing, be any final deliberations on the budgets, uh, final vote if we feel appropriate to, um, and go from there. Any other business? Jerry. Yeah, Mark, I just want to make sure that uh, uh, all the members of the budget committee are uh, aware of how things are transpiring. I think you and I have been in on various coordinating emails about uh, who's making call uh, co copies and where those copies are going to be available and everything for next week's hearing. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I, something wrong with me because I was looking at the, the part about you're not having uh, having more difficulty talking about uh, the tax impact sheet w when it's not in color. And I was worried that maybe all these years we've been discriminating against colorblind people. But uh, in, in any case, uh, do we have that all worked out that those those copies are going to be printed and made available and so on? So I, um, David had asked that we uh, that you and I uh, touch base on that, and I figured we could do that in our next segment as part of sort of the dry run of the public hearing. Uh, but to put sort of a you know a nutshell summary here of where we are, so there will be um, hard copies of so I, so we've asked that um, the town and the school district provide you know a, a, a summary document reflecting the highlights of their budget. Uh, their warrants and their MS forms. Uh, each of those have those available. Uh, and then the extra document would be the tax impact sheet that we have. We've asked that there be uh, those, all, the full set of documents be available both on the town website and the school district website so people don't have to go back and forth. And those should be available hopefully by, uh, by Monday or so. Uh, we've also will be preparing to have hard copies of these packets. Again, the full set of the town and school at both the SAU office and town hall for people to pick up if they if they need to. Um, the agenda, of course, will be is already posted. The public notice was in the paper yesterday or two days ago um, with all the WebEx information on there. Um, during the course of the meeting, uh, Andy, the public hearing, Andy and Patty. We'll be helping out by uh, kind of keeping people on mute and, um, uh, you know, riding herd on, on the technical side, so to speak. Uh, Jerry has graciously volunteered to sort of act as, a, I don't know, I'll say an informal host to help with the um, um, participants or the, uh, the comment uh, section. Um, and I think, Jerry, if you've, if you've not listened to in on any of the um, school board meetings earlier in the year, if you grab one, you know, say, you know, probably in the September time frame, right, Andy, when you guys were taking like, you know, three or four hours worth of public comments or whatever, that's probably a good model. And we'll again talk about that in a few minutes. But we'll, um, you know, regiment and and you know, allow people to and and organize things to have to allow people to comment uh, both um, here on the WebEx as well as anybody coming in just just through the phone. Um, Again, we're going to do a dry run, you know, following uh, the meeting. Any of you are welcome to stay on the line if you'd like, uh, uh, but, you, but you're not obligated to. Uh, we will use screen sharing to put these documents up to be able to, to talk to them so that, you know, we can try to keep everybody on the same page. Um, you know, and, and uh, you know, some general things, you know, we all, we all need to be cognizant of making sure that we're explicitly telling people what we're referring to and where we are as we go through all this kind of uh, information and just try to keep it keep it simple keep it clear so um so yeah we'll touch base on the number of we, you know david wants to know how many copies and that sort of thing so we'll I think we can cover that in the next segment so um any other business andy 
It's kind of continuing what you were talking about, Mark, and and I'm happy to talk about it in an, in the kind of dry run. But I thought I might bring it up in case the committee. I think you know the public hearing is the committee's meeting, so I would strongly recommend, as having gone through a bunch of these high capacity meetings before, um, that the chat feature that we've kind of played with a little bit tonight be turned off. Um, there's a couple reasons for that. We left it on, I think, the very first time we ever did one of these. And it quickly devolved into a lot of conversation that was not, it was clear that people were no longer actually paying attention to the discussion. Um, and also, it, personally, I think it reflects the spirit of the public hearing anyway. Um, in general, you know, if we were all in the auditorium, people would come up to the microphone to speak and there wouldn't be a constant chatter among the crowd uh, um, as a distraction. So, I mean, it's up to you guys. It's your meeting, but it would be my recommendation that the chat feature be disabled for that meeting. I absolutely support that and agree with that. I I have seen, yeah, I've, I've seen that be a disaster in, in way too many online meetings, regardless of the topic, including, including professional work meetings. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. Clint. I have one question. Uh, at the top of the school district's warrant, the annual meeting has been rescheduled to May 1st. Has the town meeting been rescheduled as well? Does anyone know? So, um, David, you want to uh, you want to take that one? Uh, the selectmen are meeting Monday night to discuss it. Ah, OK. I just I I just noticed that fortunately it was in bold and my eyesight's good enough to see the bold lettering. Yeah, that was another one of those little minor details that got discussed on Monday. Um, so, Andy, you want to? Yeah, I'm sorry. I actually had meant to mention it earlier, um, but we did the, the board. We didn't technically make a motion and vote, but we took a straw poll. Everybody was in favor. Um, we didn't take a, a vote mostly because Tom Serafin couldn't make the meeting. Um, but we all agreed that May 1st was a good date. Um, and Patty had informed me that since then she was able to reach out to Tom and he was he was on board with May 1st. So that's our intention. I guess another thing, just in case you weren't at the school board meeting worth note, um, I think I think David had an idea and, and I was kind of um, right there with him. I think that the intention would be to be outside after talking with Patty and the board. I, I don't think that's necessarily the case anymore. Um, her and Josh Coughlin met with a couple of technology groups to come in and offer us some more professional support for that type of meeting if necessary. And they kind of recommended and Patty agreed that the technical side of doing it outside um, would be extremely difficult. So I wouldn't say a decision was made on that. It's, it's very much in play and we're looking at how many people we can fit in the gymnasium with social distancing um, and things like that. So I guess on that, stay tuned. But May 1st was the supported date. And I'll note one other thing in regards to the hearing. Um, we do plan to record it, and the recording will then be made available for people to reference, you know, as we get as they get closer to May or for anybody who can't attend the meeting. Um, so we think that's a benefit. Any other business for this evening? In that case, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. From Paul and seconded by Dave. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Again, I'll ask Andy and Jerry and